Good morning or afternoon or whatever it is that you are watching us and, and it's great to see you. It's great to know that you're still around in this wonderful new uh, norm, as we like to call it. And this is Peggy at the Flower Nook. And today we're gonna once again talk about an artisans at the Nook. So just a quick reminder of that conversation, the Flower Nook has got uh, 2,000 square feet of regional artisan in the front of the store. And we started that about four years ago when we wanted to support uh, the artisan community in Salina. And we have just really been blessed with all the different local regional people that we have been able to offer. If you haven't been in, please, uh, please make an effort to do so because it is the holiday season. We are open, we are doing social distancing, we, we do require the mask, but we'd love to see you. And I think you would be so surprised about uh, the products and the artisan handcraft that we have. So today, I want to introduce to you um, a, a new artisan, Kristen Bloomquist. And Kristen, we are very excited to introduce you to one of our newest lines at the shop um, because of this product appears to be wonderful and I have I've tried a little bit of it, but it's I, I also love the name and the philosophy behind it. So before we talk product and when we get on to it, we want to say welcome. And I want you to tell us a little about um, you know what what's this name about gratitude? Is it that is that truly the name of this line? It truly is. And first let me say thank you. I just really appreciate um, what the Flower Nick is doing for craftspeople and artisans. It's been a tough year. And so I was thrilled to get your invitation to participate. Um, and I really appreciate what you're doing. And I think gratitude really is the name of the business. It's gratitudesoapery.com. And um, for me, gratitude is about learning to see what we have. And it is very easy to walk through life thinking, oh, I don't have this or that didn't go my way and really I think when we can start to start to see what we have in our hands um, and what's in front of us our lives are very very full um, but we live in a society where you know we're always pushed to think about wanting more wanting to do it differently it's a very um, we're, we're very goal oriented in the United States let's put it that way and I think um, Sometimes being goal oriented can get in the way of feeling grateful for what we have. So for me, gratitude is very personal. It was a moment in my life when I really needed to think differently about things. And that's when gratitude came into my life as a business. Um, so I really hope that that message resonates with people. And I think certainly over the last few months, we've all been forced to slow down. That's created some stresses on its own, but I think it's also created a lot more space for being grateful for what we have. Yeah. And the very end of this, I'm going to uh, have Kristen tell us more about how their journey of how she purchased and, and the process of this company. So I want everybody to hang on and, and watch the end because it really is a inspiring story uh, about the journey of, the, of getting to where she is now. So what we're going to be looking at next is um, a house and it's kind of uh, laboratory uh, photo of this is I think this is you Kristen with it the, is me <laughs> and is this the, is this the house that you live in no it is not okay. so when I started this business it was very important to me um, I come from the pharmaceutical industry it was my last job and so I worked a lot with GMP and cleanliness and manufacturing standards it was very important to me when I started the business in the cosmetics industry to be able to maintain those kinds of standards. So I actually have this little house. It's in this area of Kansas, 236 West 2nd Street, um, and it is dedicated only to the business. I have space where I can store all my materials at the right temperatures, space where I can um, craft products. And the picture on, um, you know, with this person in this funny mask, that is me, but it's, there's a lot of chemicals involved in this process. So you work with lye when you make soap and it gives off a lot of fumes and it can burn um, your skin, obviously, if it gets on you, but also just the fumes can be really noxious. And even things like fragrance oils and essential oils um, in highly concentrated situations can be really negative for your health. So this is just some of the safety gear we use. And that is a, that is a full air respirator that filters the air and 
of course you always cover your hair because well ish who would want you know yeah hair in their product that'd yeah. be gross and we also wear gloves i always wear long sleeves um but we have a dedicated space and dedicated equipment i love that you have a house uh, like you know i have to think like this is your workshop because i have been with a lot of artisans that i know like this the garage is my workshop or the basement is my workshop and if you're going to be serious about creating more than like three of something and we have the hobbyists which make wonderful stuff but you really have to have a designated space that you can be come in and be you can't clear off the table to start your project you have to have it all set up so and it looks so wonderful of course as a flower person i'm like oh she's got flowers on her porch so well you know, that, you know it's a cheerful too. place for me i it's i feel happy there but I, and i will say when i made my first batch of soap um several years ago i made it in the kitchen and i worried the whole time about you know how am I, am I getting everything cleaned up you know i have to make dinner and and i decided right then and there that when i opened the business working in the kitchen was not an option not going to work it's not going to work not going to work well we're looking at the ingredients and um made with intent uh vision with that you've got here and it's got a lot of wonderful stuff in it is this the original recipe it is the original recipe so actually um gratitude was started by a woman named kendra coat who is pretty famous in the soap world um she's done a lot of teaching and a lot of creating and I acquired the business from her. She had created all these formulas and I just felt really fortunate to be able to have a formula um, to work from. It's, when you look at the ingredients, it's so clear that this is really made for conditioning and softening skin. I mean, coconut oil, apricot kernel oil is really high in fatty acids, great for the skin, shea butter, rice bran oil. I mean, these are all ingredients that work together um to create a bar that it's it doesn't have big huge fluffy bubbles these are fairly tight bubbles mm -hmm. um but it's very moisturizing and softening and actually and i didn't know this till i started making soap castor oil which you know you used to give to children i hope yeah. people aren't doing that anymore um castor oil is actually what makes soap bubble that's what gives it that okay. fun foamy texture i had no idea um but it's really, it's a good formula. And we don't use any palm oil in any of our products. And there's a lot of controversy around palm oil, mm -hmm. um, you know, deforestation to create palm plantations. Okay. On the other hand, it is an important source of livelihood for many people in small countries. So we avoid it. The palm oil makes a really hard bar of soap. And that's why a lot of manufacturers resort to palm oil we don't use any our soap gets hard because we let it cure for four to six weeks and let the water evaporate out of it okay. so that's what creates the hardness in our bar interesting well we're going to look at more of the soap bars since we're look, talking about um this ingredients list and what we're seeing here is um, pouring cutting and setting so um, g give us some of the details of what we're looking at the pictures here so on the well it's my left so i guess it's everybody's left um when you create soap, it's, you know, you know, it's liquid. You put the lye in it, you create the oils, you measure the oils, you heat them up. There is a certain temperature you need to get the oil to. And when you put lye crystals in water, it gets really hot, like over 190, close to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So you want those two ingredients, the mixture of the oils and the lye to get close to the same temperature. So that when you mix it together, the chemical process happens at about the same temperature. So everything is kind of working at the same speed. If one is really hot and one is really cold, it doesn't work so well. As I've um, gotten more experience with making soap, I now work at virtually room temperature. Some soapers work a little hotter. Mine tends to be about room temperature, hmm. you know, maybe a little higher, maybe 80 degrees. And you mix it all and it comes together and it, it just looks kind of, you have this big bowl of oil, like you might look like you were gonna deep fry stuff and then you pour mm -hmm. the lye in and just immediately the chemical reaction starts and you start creating soap and then you stir it and it um, it gets hard. And sometimes it gets hard really, really fast. So like the pan of soap that we're looking at here on the right-hand side, um, certain fragrances, certain oils do, they accelerate what we call trace. And trace is where you pour your soap and you want it to be sort of like a thin cream, usually. 
But something, sometimes it just goes really, really fast. So you'll notice that this top is not completely smooth. That's because this particular um, scent of soap, which is radiance, um, it gets hard really, really fast. And if you aren't paying attention, pretty soon you've just got a big lump of soap that of, you're probably big, gonna end up thrown big, out. Big, yeah, a big bar of soap. <laughs> a big bar of soap. Yeah. So talk us through what we're looking at here. Now, interestingly, from the last slide, you saw that soap was that bright red color. As it cures out, this is the color it becomes, this orangey, peachy color. Oh. It's radiant. It's okay. kind of, it's a citrus scent. And once it hardens up in that pan, then you run it through something called a log splitter and you cut it into the size piece that you want. So you see it here, and then you put it in the soap cutter and you just pull the bar down. Those are guitar strings that you tighten and you kind of tune them across. So you make sure they're all kind of at the same pitch. You pull those wires down and it cuts your log into the size of bars you want. And then you pick them up and you set them out to cure, like you can see it's doing here on the far right. And a soap can take anywhere from four to six weeks to cure. So what you do is you pick sample bars at the beginning of the cut process and you weigh them. And then you weigh them at regular intervals until they, the weight stops going down. So we sell our bars at a certain weight. Um, we tend to cut our bars about two or three tenths of an ounce over the stated weight on the label because that much water will evaporate out of the bar. And when the weight stabilizes, that's when I know the soap is cured enough that I can put it away until it's time for sale. So how many bars are you cutting at once? Over a hundred. So I started making really small pans of soap, um, maybe 10, and then I graduated to a bar of like a pan of maybe 30. But now when I make soap, I make 109 bars at a time. Wow. And it, it, this is not a job for the week. I mean, it's, you know, 50 mm -hmm. pounds of soap going into this pan. So you gotta, it's, it's tiring work it's at the end of the day, soap. making soap. I want to go home and take a nap. Yeah. Very interesting. I love that little machine there. So uh, hand stamping. So to make, go on with this process of you doing everything individually, I want people to realize this is really a kind of a one woman, wonderful uh, process here. So we're seeing hand stamping on a bar and what, what is the process of the stamping and what is the meaning of that stamp? Sure, so we want to, um, well, partly it's branding. I mean, we want everybody to remember where their bar came from, but it is, you, you lay the bars out on a table and you take this little stamp and you go through and you stamp, we stamp the logo on each bar. And the logo really is just a reminder um, to look outside yourself. I mean, when I, when people look at the moon and the stars, I want them to remember that um, life is bigger than this moment. So really we're wanting people to think about um, I, I don't know how, how to explain it exactly, but it's not about infinity, but it's about seeing the possibilities. You know, we get so focused on, oh, and being upset, but really when you look at the moon and the stars, it's a moment to stop and think about all that is out there outside you that you never give any time to. And we really want people to reflect on that for a moment and to trust themselves. I think for me, when I look at like this and I look at our intuition bar, that's like such an easy fit for people to see that. But every time you look at this logo, we want you to think, yeah, there's more than, mm -hmm. there's more than just what I see. I have a lot of things that I don't often see. I, I like the symbol because for me, I'm thinking, okay, you start this morning with all these aspirations and then somewhere during the day you hit this road bump and it's like, once again, you're in the negatory bin, but then you know the, the next day it's, you get to start it again and then a, it'll be a new journey and possibly if you, if you approach it differently. So it is kind of that uh, sun setting and sun starting of your life every single uh, moment with it with the deal. Hey, I, I'm sure, I'm just, now I'm thinking, you must have the strongest arm muscles in, I've seen you cut soap, I've seen you mix soap, and now I'm seeing your hand stamp. So I know that's taken some strength in your hands and arms to get that process done. It does. It, it has been, um, I, I, fortunately, I had a great trainer I was working with, it, you know, in person before this COVID mess, but um, built up a lot of arm strength. I bet you. 
So two things about this that I want to interject, and then I'm going to let you talk. On your website, you've got this really wonderful, uh, what, what, it, it, you're going to pick your scent based on these questions on the website. And it goes through, who doesn't like taking a little question that gives you some kind of a personality you should be or you might enjoy. And it's really easy. You just go there, you click on it. And there's, I don't remember how many questions, but it's pretty simple. Click, click, click. And at the very end, it says, you know, you might enjoy this fragrance or this flavor, or this is what you need in life. So I urge everybody to get on that site. And, and or if you're gonna give it for a friend, you pretty well know your friend, take the test for them you know, help you pick out which, uh, which one to have it. On the other side, which also matches that wonderful uh, multicolored bar is a lot of, is it paint? No, these are micas, which are natural products. They occur um, in nature and we, um, these are used to color the soap. So you uh, mix a small amount of these micas and their minerals. So you, you might, um, when you look at a bar of soap, it'll say things like manganese violet. Remember when you had that Crayola crayon that was manganese violet when you were a kid? Okay. This is the color. Um, so it's a base of minerals and then their colored minerals are added to it. Just like, I mean, like you might, you'll find ferrous products in them. So things that create colors in nature and you mix these with a little bit of oil and a very small amount goes a very long way will color your bar. And that's, they're so fun to work with. I like sometimes just get them out and, and look at the colors because I think they're really cheerful. Yeah. Well, now since we've seen that that red bar, the very first slide turned out like a little different color when it cured, you know, looking at this rainbow color, I'm really appreciating it now because I know you've had to do extra to make sure that when it comes out, it's still this intense color, uh, which, which is what makes me attracted towards it. You know, all the colors of the rainbow there for remind well, us how many I will say that okay. green color, when you mix the green into the soap, it turns the most hideous shade of brown you have ever seen. And the first time I did it, I thought, oh, no. And then I picked up the instructions and like, no, it's supposed to be this color. Is it really supposed to be this color? And it is the most amazing chemical process ever. I mean, it is truly the most awful shade of brown. Nobody would ever want to buy anything that color. And then it becomes this lovely green as it cures out. That is really interesting. How many, remind us how many bars you do make. Sure. So we make um, 13 bars total, we have, or 12 bars total. We have seven that we call um, bath and body bars, and those are the colored bars. And we have four that are facial bars, and those are a little bit different. Those are um, scented with essential oils, and they all have um, some sort of exfoliant in them, like a cosmetic grade clay or um, activated charcoal in the charcoal and tea tree bar. And then we have one bar that sits kind of in the middle and it's called Truth. And it has no added color and no added scent. It is just so, I have found that so many people are really trying to eliminate um, scent from their lives. I mean, yeah. not all scent because people love flowers, but people really don't want scent in places where you don't necessarily expect it. So bath soap, hand soap, dish soap, laundry soap, people really are just looking for a way to not have that scent. Of course, then you can layer on whatever cologne or perfume yeah. you want. Well, we're gonna look at some of those bars up close and we, we aren't looking at all of them, but we're just gonna give you a little hint of, of some of the ones and let Kristen talk a little about each one of them. And, and the wording, we, we, what you're seeing here on your screen of course is fragrance or what is um, the, the hint of smell, but also some of the wording that I think is really important uh, to think about. So here we have abundance. Color you know, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, right, I mean, so abundance is green and I think everybody thinks, oh, green money, but it's really not. I mean, I mean, the abundance really is, I want people to think more about nature when you think of abundance. And this bar is a very um, herby, Scent. It's got uh, basil oil in it, citrus. It's really a very green scent, like if you went outside in the spring. And I really want, if, if you want your intention to be to have more abundance in your life, then this is a great way to remind yourself of that. You get the abundance bar, you use it in the morning, you think, what do I really want today? I want to appreciate the abundance that I have in my life. Um, and that green color and the green scent, it just is a very powerful reminder. Um, of what you have and what you'd like to see grow 
see grow. Yeah. You know, in the um, marketing world, they say green is the most calming color because it does bring you back down, help you focus. And you'll see that a lot of dentist offices put green inside there, you know, in the room that you're having your teeth done. I always find that interesting in the marketing world. That that green, is interesting. Green's a powerful color. So back now we're into an intense color, um, compassion. Compassion. So this is an intense color and an intense scent. So it's pomegranate and sweet cassia, which is cinnamon. Um, if you were looking for kind of a winter scent, this is probably the closest we have with that cinnamon scent and that red color. And it's it's kind of pink, pinky red. And it's really, it is about loving yourself. And I think when I took a yoga class, um, I had one instructor who would always say, you know, we want to show compassion to the world, but also to ourselves and um, send love to the world, but mainly to yourselves. And I think for me, that's what this compassion bar is really about. It's about saying, I I'm okay, just like I am. I might not have accomplished everything I wanted to accomplish today, but I did a lot. And when you, and it's that very homey smell of cinnamon and, and softness. And I think this bar for me is, um, this is one that I really appreciate. It's just one that I can pick up and immediately feel like things are going to be okay. Yeah, and I and I like that you've um, linked it to the, the compassion starts with yourself first. Um, that we've got to take care of ourselves and be approachable and uh, you know aware and especially at this time when we're all just trying to figure you know what what's down the street from us next. But uh, so. Here we are at the most popular, I believe. Uh, so. It is. so comfort, I mean, I think everybody associates lavender with comfort. What I like about this bar is I mean, it's lavender, but it's a very, a very crisp, clean lavender because we mix it with some chamomile scent as well. So it's not, it's not that kind of dusty grandma lavender that people might think about. This one is really um, a fresh scent, but obviously lavender, everybody knows it's very calming, it's very soothing. And comfort, we really want people to associate that comfort with um, taking a moment to breathe and comforting yourself. I mean, when we get very anxious, we need to find ways to just calm down and soothe our, soothe our anxiety. And this is one of those bars that'll do it. It's just a very, it won't put you to sleep, but it will help you just take that breath, that pause that you need um, yeah. to sort of regret. It actually is supposed to release some dopamines in your brain. They say it's great with children. This would be a good bar to use with children that have uh, you know, some anxiousness because it really does, it just, it just gives you a chance to kind of reboot. Um, it does, kids yeah. love this one. Very nice with it. So I'm looking at another one, uh, an intense blue. So this is probably one of my favorite scents, intuition. It is um, cedar and sweet grass and juniper. It's a very, um, it's very earthy, but fruity at the same time. And it's just that blue color. I think it, for me, intuition always feels blue. Uh, it, that kind of trying to, you know, we talk about blue sky thinking or, you know, you look at the ocean, it goes on infinitely or so it seems, and that intuition should be the same way. Sometimes we don't listen to that little voice inside ourselves and we really often need to rely on our own instincts and our own um, decision-making. And that's really what I want people to think of when they pick up this bar. It's like, it, you know, you, you do know the answer. You just have to trust yourself enough. Um, and as you say, listen to the silence of our internal voice. You gotta, yes. listen. you gotta listen, yeah. You gotta listen. Another wonderful color. I love this bar too. My goodness, I think I like them all, don't I? But I can, maybe that's good since I make them. I should like them all. Radiance, this is just the happiest scent we have. This is orange. And, you know, they say that the scent of orange is very energizing. It really helps you get out and um, get up and get moving. And this is a bar where we really want people with this orange scent to think about, you know, getting up, getting out there. It really will make you feel like you can take on the world. And this one, when I smell it, I just smell, it just feels happy. It smells like those orange push-ups we had as kids. 
Um, and we want people to remember that, you know, that glow you take with you, you know, sometimes you, you ever have that experience where you meet someone and they say something that you were totally unexpected, like, oh, I love your bag or, you know, oh, thank you for that. Or, oh, your smile is so great. And, you know, those little moments mean so much. And that really is a moment of radiance. You're really making it special for someone else. Yeah. And that's really what this bar means to me. Excuse me. I had to, when I was putting this on my PowerPoint, I had to, the Asian, what is that? Uh, the Y-U-Z. Asian Yuzu. Okay. It, so it is a citrus fruit. It, um, I don't know, it's a little bit smaller than a grapefruit. It's kind of a yellow green color when it's ripe. Um, actually, I think on our Instagram feed, we have a picture of yuzu and it's just an Asian okay. citrus fruit. It, you're seeing it a lot more recently, I think come up in particularly in uh, fragrance. Okay. So another fragrance we're gonna look at, um, respect. So, you know, this one is also, this is lemon and white sage. So it is, um, it's kind of a nice mix. It's not like that bright lemonade scent. It's a little softer than that. And it's a kind of a yellow gold color. It's not bright yellow like lemons. It's more mellow than that. And it's really, um, it's a quiet scent. I would say that you wouldn't maybe think of lemon to be that way, but this is a quiet one. And we want people to really, when you pick up respect, you wanna think, yeah, I'm okay. This is, this is what I'm meant to be doing. And it's just one of those kind of reaffirming scents. It, um, for me, respect, you know, for ourselves, we're so hard on ourselves all the time and it's never quite right. It, at least for me, I always feel like it could have been a little bit, you know, did I do it quite right? Did I say the right thing? Did I, you know, did I look right? And this really is a way to say, you're fine just like you are. And we need to remember to tell ourselves that a whole lot more than we do. Yeah, what a great message. I love that it's always back to taking, your, your wording is always look at yourself. And then because if you're loving yourself and taking care of yourself, then you will automatically, uh, you know, do something for nice for everybody else. So it's a great, yeah. it's a great message. So this is truth, and you talked about it earlier, the no scent, which I'm so glad you have, because my family is all uh, about no scents. Uh, I've got a couple of kids that are scent free. This is perfect for them. Um, yeah. And, and, and the this wording. was a bar. Yeah. When I originally acquired the line, there was no unscented bar in the line. Um, but I did some craft shows and some art fairs where people asked specifically, do you have something with no scent? And so this is just pure soap. And we created it, we call it truth because there's no place to hide. This soap either comes out looking just like it's supposed to. I mean, you can't hide behind a color. There is no scent to hide behind. It, this is just pure soap. And so we call it truth because I think that's how people think about truth. There's just no place to hide. I personally love this bar um, because I have a cologne that I really like. So this one works for me with the cologne that I wanna wear. And if I remember correctly, you, this is a new bar that you created personally. It is. Yeah. it is. I am, I just, this is a bar that I created because I just felt like there was something missing in the line. We had something for everyone except the people who wanted something that was purer, I guess I would say. And so this kind of fills out that line, fills the space in between. You can use it for your face because it's very gentle. You can use it in the shower or the bath. Um, it sort of sits in the middle of yeah. the line. I'm sure all the no scent people are, are thanking you for that consideration and remember them. So in looking, we're gonna talk a little about packaging and um, this is the gratitude sampler box. So, um, so I, I'm in love with this, yes. Everything is just wonderful. Oh, thank you. So, you know, even with the quiz, it can be kind of hard to choose. You think, well, yeah. that's not what I thought I was going to say. I thought I was going to say I was going to get, you know, the orange one or the blue one. So we wanted to create a way for people to have a, an easy way to sample a little bit of everything. So we created the sampler box. Um, and these are just pieces of soap, actual soap out of the pan that we would normally sell as a whole bar that I cut usually into thirds. And we package them in these little glassine envelopes because it's those are very environmentally friendly and I can slide them into this aluminum tin that is reusable. That was also important to me. Um, and you can 
you get one of each of the bath and body bars. So one of each of the colored bars, including the love bar, and then also um, one of the facial soaps. And here we see authentic um, because that was the first of the facial soaps that we launched. And it's just a way to try a little bit of everything. You, they're, they're substantial pieces. They're not, you know, little tiny slivers that don't mean anything. I want people to actually have a pretty good sized bar of soap so you can use it several times. So you can decide if you really like it or not. But for me, this is fun. I love the sampler. Yeah, it's a great, this is a great gift because it is all in this little tin, really a dressy little tin box and you open it up and there's all those little soaps for you. So speak to me about those packaging again, those little uh, bags, because I know that you offer alternative soap bar packaging. We do. So we have boxes that our soap comes in um, that are, you know, kind of traditional boxes. They have holes in the top so you can sniff. Um, and then we also offer these glassine bags. And for me, the boxes were important because I want, when people choose this product, I want them to have a good experience from start to finish. So I want the website to be engaging. I want right up to the time you open that bar of soap, I want you to feel like, hey, this is good. I've done something nice for myself or for my friend. I've given a gift that I know is really going to resonate for her. Um, but I also know that when you open that box, there's really nothing else to do with it. You're going to put it in the trash. So I wanted to provide an alternative to those boxes. And I came up with these glassine envelopes. We wrap the soap um, in a paper label. We put the paper wrapped soap in the envelope in this little bag. So when you get it and you want to do something with that wrapping, you can go in the recycling bin right away. There's no question about it. It's very low waste. Um, it's just an alternative because I think we need to be a lot more conscious about single use packaging. So for me, the glassine envelopes we're a way to give people that alternative. It doesn't yeah. work in retail. If you're picking up on a shop, it, the bags just don't hold up well. But if you're ordering online, that's an option. Yeah, that's great. That's a great option. So here's some facts. I want people to look at once again, kind of we've already chatted about it, just to review uh, facts about all gratitude bars. And I see this photo on this side, kind of a multicolored, but I don't remember that in our bar lineup. So what, what is that soap there? So this is a donation bar. So we donate a bar of soap for every bar of soap that we sell. So when you cut soap, there's always a little bit at the end that's a little wonky looking and those have to get sliced off. So we just throw those all in a box. And then when the box gets full, we make donation soap. It's just a regular base of soap and we put all of these little confetti pieces in it um, as a way to just recycle and not throw that, not throw that stuff out. Then we slice those bars up and we donate them. So we did, um, right after we opened, we had a kind of a lot of sales. We made a donation to Ashby House. And last year we've also donated um, to Cat's Corner, which is the food pantry at um, K-State Polytechnic in Salina for college students. There's a huge issue with food insecurity among um, college students. So we donated there. We've donated to um, the LGBTQ organization at Bethany College. They just started that and we felt like that was an important um, important opportunity to recognize people's bravery in coming forward and supporting that in an environment where you might not traditionally think that that would flourish. Um, we've also donated a lot of bars to an organization called Family Promise, um, which is a homeless ministry for churches sponsor people who are without a permanent home for a week or two weeks, either in their church or in a, a home that they have. So we've donated a lot of bars to Family Promise. Um, so those are just some of the organizations that have gotten soap that looks a lot like this. Yeah, what a wonderful thing. The donation is wonderful. And then if you're the person that benefits from that um, little piece of loving, you know, soap, that is a, really a wonderful a byline of your company that does that. We're switching from soap and we're going to talk a little about lip conditioner. And I, I want you to know, Kristen, that people come in, they see it and they say to me, oh, you've got lip gloss. Why is this lip conditioner and not lip gloss? So, yeah, sure. So we, lip conditioner is really, um, the ingredients in this product are pretty simple. There's coconut oil, there's apricot kernel oil, there's castor oil and candelilla wax, and then a little bit of fragrance. So this is not going to keep your lips. We don't, I mean, it does make your lips a little shiny from the castor oil, but this is really, 
you know, just like you put lotion on your body, this is really lotion for your lips. It is very moisturizing. It gives you an immediate sense of softness and delicacy. And the candelilla wax, which is a vegan alternative to beeswax, um, just provides that little extra bit of hydrating and, and protection from the elements. So if you're outside and the wind, you know, or the cold can really dry out your lips, that candelilla wax provides a little bit of a barrier. The coconut and the apricot oil are very high in fatty acids, so they're very moisturizing. And you've got that castor oil for just a bit of shine. Um, it's not the old fashioned, you know, paraffin based sticky lip conditioner. This is really soft and gentle. Um, I love it. I use it all the time. And it comes in, is it four flavors? Four. Four flavors. So the colors coordinate with the hand and body soap. So we have compassion, radiance, um, comfort, and respect. And this is just, I mean, it really is handmade. So it, in the picture on the right, you can see me, I have these very long spouted pitchers and you pour in to the tube and then you kind of have to top it off because it sinks a little bit. So it really is hand poured. And then I roll each one in the label. Hmm. Interesting process with it. Well, switching from lip gloss, we're talking about face masks, which is another product that the shop has. And, and we've got some ingredients here. And once again, we've got the, the wonderful um, mask, you know, packaging material. So is, is this, does it come in a flavor or is it just a certain type of mask or how does masking work? So I have, um, we're just launching these, the launch actually this week, and we have three masks. So we have one that's authentic, which is the charcoal and tea tree with Gracious, which matches the pink color of the Gracious soap bar. And we have delicate, which matches the yellow delicate bar. Um, so I felt like I wanted um, a complement to the products that we already sold. And face masks seem like sort of a natural fit to go with those bars and also in keeping with the whole concept of self-care because these are not quickie, slap it on, wash it off. I used powdered masks. So when you buy our mask, it is a powdered mask and you mix it yourself with water. Um, so the ingredients are always fresh. You don't have it sitting on a shelf with water already in it. So you activate this mask when you, when you mix it up in your house and you can control the consistency of the mask you want. Um, and they all have some sort of exfoliating agent in them. So the authentic has um, activated charcoal, which really is great at attracting impurities. I've had friends say that it really improves the appearance of the pores in their skin. Um, and it's what we're doing now as we launch these masks to really sort of promote that self-care side of it too is when you buy the mask, um, there is going to be a downloadable meditation. So you can mix the mask, put it on your face, and then you can listen to the meditation while that mask sits on your face. So you're really appreciating that moment of self-care. We want you to really focus on the fact that you're doing something good for yourself and not feel bad about that because if we don't take care of ourselves, we can't take care of anybody else. So really pause and take that moment. Oh, great message. I love that downloadable site too. So this, this is something else I took off the website because I wanted you to speak to it because it really is a powerful part of your company. So we donate 10% of our profit um, to charities. This year, the charity we're donating to is the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Um, we just I just watched what was going on this year with um, the Black Lives Matters protest. And, you know, as a lawyer, I understand that the justice system is not always just. If you are wealthy um, and don't have trouble affording an attorney, you're probably gonna have a much better outcome than someone who is poor. I mean, it's just a reality. And I saw that when I first started clerking for an appellate court judge in Kansas. So we're donating this year to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Um, I don't know what the donation will be to next year, but it's very important to me that we give back because you, you know, you sometimes think, oh, I can't afford that right now, or, oh, I can't give to them. Um, there's always a way. Yeah. And that's just important for me with this business to remember that there's always a way. This is a, this is really great for the consumer because you can purchase 
something for yourself or your friend. And in doing that, it automatically has a kickback to somebody in our own local community, which you can't, you know, it's, it's just a win-win for everybody. So, so th thank you and your community, your company for giving that the, the thought process and then starting that. So we're back to looking at you because I want you to tell us, you know, um, are there future plans for the company? And do you have some, um, what can you share with us a little more about the company and what, what is the future looking like? So I think um, the future for me is I, I want the company to grow and it's, it's very personal for me. So I started gratitude. Um, it's not anything I ever thought I'd do. I had a career in corporate America. I worked for at and I worked for Pfizer as a lawyer. I ran a business and um, my job ended not for any reason that I chose. Um, there was a reorganization. I lost my job at Pfizer. Um, there wasn't really another role for me. And it was not what I had planned. And I spent some time um, feeling really bad about myself. It wasn't the ending I had chosen. And, and I finally, I started, I started a yoga practice and I started looking at what I had um, and not what I didn't have. And it made it it was life-changing. I mean, literally life-changing for me. So gratitude, I found out about the brand at about that same time. And um, it just seemed like a natural fit because I realized that everything I'd done in my career enabled me to buy and run this business. I had experience in you know, how to market. I had experience in understanding manufacturing. I had experience in understanding the consumer and regulatory and I, you know, so everything I had, everything that had happened, um, led me to the point where I had the knowledge and the ability to start and run this business. And when I could see that, um, and that everything had led me to this point, life for me got a lot easier. So when I think about what I really want gratitude to be, it, it is about the product. I want it to have great product. I want people to have a, an exceptional experience with the product. But more than that, I want everyone to be able to get to the point in their life that I am at where I see that and things may not have gone like I planned, but they went like they should. And I can be grateful for where I am today. It doesn't mean you're never sad. It doesn't mean you're never unhappy, but you can say, okay, this is where I am and I must be here for a reason. And how am I going to take what I have and make something that feeds me my soul and does something for someone else. So for me, I, you know, I told my husband this morning when we were talking about doing this, if I can help just one person, one person see that life is more than an empty bowl, then we've done enough. I would consider that a success. Well, that's, that's great. That's a great mission. So I wanna be sure that you guys know that we've got Kristen's products at the shop. You can come in during the day, but if you are still worried about, you know, virus or weird things, you know, call and we'd be happy to stay open late, just give you a private showing. Kristen has a wonderful website. She's got Instagram. You know, there's a lot of different ways you can connect, connect on her site too. And she's gonna recently or soon to be have a uh, product unveiling, can we call it? Can we give that secret? To, there's gonna be news coming. Yes. So we are actually um, re re revamping the website a little bit. I wanted to um, just provide a little more content, a little more user helpful content. So we've revised the website. We're um, launching new products. The face mask, the bath fizz, the lip conditioner are going to be launched at the end of this week on the website. Um, just trying to expand that product line and expand those opportunities for people to take a mindful moment um, and see where they are and really create those mindful moments in small moments throughout the day. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes sitting on a cushion, meditating. It's great if you can do that, not everybody can. Um, but when you're putting on lip conditioner, when you are just washing your face in the morning, when you're taking that bath, those are all moments that can be a little bit more. And that's what we want our products to help you realize. 
great, great message. I, I appreciate hearing the very end. So say, so I was going to say, stay tuned, like a TV commercial to watch, you know, the unveiling. When you get on that website, you'll note among a lot of great information, there are blogs that they have put on there, really information about meditation and some of the things. It's, it's well worth that to look at um, because it is not only does the company um, offer product that really lives the lifestyle that she's been talking about on this particular, um, you know, video. So that's kind of our message for today. I really want you to, um, we thank you, Kristen, for coming. It's been a great information, a lot of knowledge you shared with us. So uh, I'm anxious for people to come in and look at the product, test the product, and get some feedback on it. And we you, you viewers, we can't thank you enough for shining on and coming and supporting the flower neck and supporting the artist. So with that, we say, um, make it a good day.